About your mother. Her name's Afalna, right? Maybe. So what? That sounds like a yes to me. I called it the second I saw you. Boy, am I ever glad I sent up smoke. Tell me, how's she doing? Good? No. She's dead. <clears throat> you know, the whole reason I joined Shinra was to become a pilot. But I wound up as a gopher for some lazy grease monkeys. Had me running around HQ fixing lights and whatnot. One time, though, I came across a pretty young thing with a little girl in her arms. That was you, wasn't it? Probably. <laughs> you were knee high to a Tonberry. And I was what? Called the smoker, I'd wager. I can do for you. I want to help. What? Why? I'm uh, just trying to do right by you. <laughs> Flying us around will be more than plenty. Thanks. Then again, if you're just dying to help, you could take us to the salsa for free. Free? It's fine. We'll pay. It's on me. When you want to head to the saucer, just give me a holler. I will say that I do kind of see what people are saying about Sid being pretty different. But I think it'll change. I think, like, because the thing about the original is that Sid was always kind of nice to us. Like, granted, he was, like, outwardly abrasive. But he was always, like, nice to us. Like, we asked for something. Like, we walked into his house and was like, can we see the Bronco? And, like, he told us his whole life story. And then, like, afterwards, he's like, yeah, I'll join you. Like, he wasn't necessarily, like, mean to us. He was just abrasive. Um, so I don't think this is like crazy to be nice to us and he's always yeah he's always a good dude anyways but it the interactions are definitely very different you know but I feel like that's gonna change when we go to Rocket Town he's gonna be like like as soon as he gets into Rocket Town and Shinra's talking to him and stuff like he's gonna be he's gonna like the the mean side's gonna come out you know or the cranky side is gonna come out like i think they're setting him up to kind of be a a nice guy but then goes off the rails you know kind of thing which i think will fit him fine in the original he was kind of just permanently cranky <laughs> until like he's with us for a while and then he kind of opens up here it feels like he's a nice, good guy, but then, like, I feel like at some point he's going to go off the rails and get, like, triggered, you know? So, we'll have to see what happens, but I do agree that he feels very different. Like, the original Sid would never, first of all, like, give us a ride for free when he barely knows us, but, like, secondly, like, go out of his way to help, you know? Like, at least not the second we met him. Sure, like, once he's part of the team, but not the second we met would he be going out of his way to help us. Um, but having said that, I do really love this connection between him and Afalna. That gives him a way better reason to join us later, other than just like, well, I got nothing else to do. Because in the original, it was literally, I can't go back to Rocket Town, so I guess I'll follow you guys. That's why he joins. And then later he finds purpose. But the reason he joins is just can't go back to Rocket Town. 
So here, I feel like we'll have a much better connection and reason for him to join the party and reason for him to help us. I do wonder where it goes, though, because I always liked how Sid was basically just joined for the sake of joining, but then later finds purpose when we go up into space and he's like, you know what, I do want to protect the planet. So, like, that's a really great moment for him. And I'm afraid that if he joins to help a Fauna or to help a Fauna's daughter, that we won't get that same moment where he, like, realizes why he truly wants to fight for the planet. But you could still have both, hopefully. Um, so, but I do like this idea, like, because I, I think it'll make a lot more sense as to why he joins. So... Like, I really, I really do like the idea. I think it's cool. And it's a good way to, like, connect Sid to this game, because otherwise he's just flying us around. So. Yeah, pretty cool. Yeah, that's true. He also says, we also say, like, we're going to beat up Shinra on the way. And he's like, all right, I like beating up Shinra. <laughs> so, but it's definitely not, he's definitely not on the same path as we are. He's not in it. He doesn't care about Sephiroth. He doesn't care about saving the planet. Like, he's just... But then later, he gets purpose, so... But here, like, he'll have purpose, potentially, when he joins. So then it's just be, gonna be a question of do we still get that awesome moment where he wants to protect the planet? I think we still could, yeah. Hey, good to go. Let's get a move on then. I'm really kind of curious if Sid's just going to be completely different in this game in a lot of ways. Because so far, he's definitely really different. said that Sephiroth is your foe. I have a history with him. Unfinished business. Hmm? He bothering you? <laughs> Want me to give him the boot? Try to screw us over, and you're a dead man. <laughs> Please. Take a seat. Do you think you can manage eight? I ain't gonna lie. That's a tall order for most pilots. Uh. Lucky for you, I ain't most pilots. Closing. So, if you've got something to be, you 
Is that their way of saying explore things? Uh oh. I saw this coming. Sid? I said just sit tight. This beauty's maintained by an expert and piloted by a professional. Y'all are in good hands. You're sure? Because I think that was the end. He's dead. Any landing you can swim away from. <laughs> you almost <laughs> killed us. <sighs> I do love the uh, the hand behind the head because Sid always did that in the original. Love well, how they even the mannerisms they like nailed. For what what little mannerisms the original models had. Okay, let's start her up. <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah, but the wings are still broken. And what of it? Only one man has mastered the land, air, and sea. You're looking at it. You got that? They definitely got okay, so. the pompousness. So you can down. think of me as the captain of your ship. Strap on in and we'll punch through the chop. Aye, aye. <laughs> Let's set sail. Straight through the ravine and on the coast of El Sol. And after that, we hit it. Sounds like a plan. We'll be there before you know it. Let's set a course for Coast of El Sol. Barrett, so positive. Roger that. Full speed ahead. So I saw this coming. Hey, wow, like no wings. Get out of here, if motion sensor. According to company records, the keystone was housed there. Wait a second. I thought you said it was at the gold saucer. Aye, I'm getting to that. To the threat. There was a... Oh, right. So, the museum turned out to be a total flop. Closed as soon as it opened. But, somewhere between cutting the ribbon and boarding up the windows, the keystone vanished into the air. So it's not at the saucer? Do you know where it went? No, but I know a man who went. The former curator. Hmm? How do you know that name? Let's just say... I've been around a while. After the museum debacle, Bob Deal was devoted only to be promoted again when the saucer took off. Made director in no time. A real riches to rags to riches story. All of which is why we're bound for the saucer. So, I saw this coming because a lot of the areas have... Um, docks that like there was nothing to do there it was just a dock and I was like at some point we're going to be able to you know board at these docks but this 
is amazing because like this actually makes this feel like a world map like they somehow found a way everyone's been asking for a world map and you know this game isn't like your typical world map it's open zones that are connected but this kind of makes it like a world map because you can just drive to the separate areas or, you know, boat, sail. Like, that's incredible. What a cool idea. Like, yeah, we can't have like a an OG world map where you can just walk around and enter areas, but like instead we have the open zones and they're all connected by water and you can take the tiny Bronco to them. So I'm what could we literally like start in Midgar and jump on this thing and scoot all the way to Mount Nabel without loading? Like that's insane. And now imagine imagine the high wind in part three where you can just fly over everything and see everything from above but even this is like amazing like I can see the gold saucer I'm wondering how open this is gonna be I mean looking at this it looks like you can just like that's why all these little rivers are here where they weren't before that's why the continents are more scattered like this so you can and, and to be fair, they were similar like that in the original with the river going through the middle of the second continent, but not, not to this degree. But, man, that's so cool. Okay, real quick, before I forget, what did you guys think about Vincent? Because, like, that was weird. I don't know if I really liked that. I mean, it was kind of similar to the way it happened in the original where he just appeared and was like, are you after Sephiroth? Okay, I'm coming. But it feels weird that they set up all that with like the boss fight and everything. And then he just randomly pops in there, like. It's weird that they changed it, but then didn't change it. <laughs> you know? Well, that's what he says in the original. In the original, he's like, you said you're going after Sephiroth. And we say yes, and then he says like, oh, that'll bring us, that'll bring me to Hojo. So it's not like it's different from the original, but it's just weird that like, they set it up to be something different. Where like, instead of him just joining, we fight him. And then he's like, screw this, I'm going back to bed. So I thought later maybe there'd be a moment where he like came in and saved us or another moment where we fought him again or something and then he joined us or like it felt like they were building up to something bigger but then he just joins like he does in the original where he's just like yeah after Sephiroth all right it also it was weird that he like joined on the plane instead of something else <laughs> like it was just kind of awkward it wasn't bad it was just kind of awkward but maybe that was the point just kind of interesting I feel like it could have been they could have done something better with it, but I feel like this is fine also. I just was not expecting that. Like, definitely was not expecting that. After that big scene, I was expecting Vincent to be totally different. I expected it, like, maybe we were fighting Hojo and he, like, appeared and helped or something, you know? Like, I expected something else. So that just totally caught me off guard. How's it going, Stormer? Welcome. Good to have you here. Hey, see, you're not here, right? 
You used to work for Shinra. Still do, on occasion. The boys got their uses. That's gonna be a problem. You see, we don't take kindly to friends of the company. And I don't take kindly to that tone of yours. The man who tries to lord his power over me is gonna wish he didn't. That's what's appealing about the skies. Got them all to myself. Rats can have their race in the gutter. Never much cared for the squeaking anyways. <laughs> I miss the wild blue yonder dearly. That's gonna be really cool when he uh, turns on Shinra. We're setting that up nicely. They're setting up so much for the third game, it's honestly genius. We already know all of it, but... They weren't afraid to set stuff up, even though we already know what happens. Hey look, it's the beach we fought on. Yeah, see, I knew these were going to be something. Man, that's so cool that you can drive around the whole world with the tiny Bronco. That is just amazing. That feels so OG Final Fantasy VII, you know? We sincerely hope you enjoyed your trip with us. We did not. I thought it was Bronco Airlines. Not after his wings got clipped. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, we really appreciate you ferrying us around. You're most welcome. Hey, y'all are headed to the saucer, ain't you? I might can tag along, take in the splendor. What do you think? Of course. Girl always knows just what to say. Am I right? Shall we? <laughs> Well, look at that. Wait, the gang's all here. Where's Vincent? He gone. Up there. Another loner. As if one <laughs> wasn't enough of a pain in my ass. Yeah, one's more than enough. <laughs> you mean me? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that was pretty great. You can fast travel to any location. Oh. Oh, there's a bunch of new side quests. We got more mini games, although. The attractions of Gold Saucer have undergone a series of renovations, as have mini games available in other regions. Try revisiting familiar locations and seeing what new challenges await. So all the mini games have changed, not just not just the Gold Saucer. The Gold Saucer, I feel like it's just gonna be like new races and difficulties. It's not gonna really have anything new. Which is probably the same as all the other side quests. Having said that, I am very excited to see. how the other mini games have changed. Oh my god, there's dude, everything. Dude. I think we're I think we've reached quote unquote post game, like where post game starts. <laughs> there's just new stuff everywhere. There's new queen's blood here. Dude, I'm going to be playing this game for like 300 hours. It's insane. It's actually insane how much there is to do in this game. And all of it's like all of it's like content. It's not like, oh, I can play Queen's Blood for 300 hours because it's the type of game that has replayability. Like, no, like it's actual content, side quests with characters and story points and new enemies in Queen's Blood and new difficulties in side game. Like, holy moly. What is this, some pirate's booty? Wait. 
It's actually Pirate's Booty. Oh, no way. Hey, Cloud, let me see that. This reeks of sea salt, and not the fresh kind either. This thing smells ancient. Really? Yeah. Gramps told me about it once. Long ago, when most folks spent their lives at sea, a war broke out between some pirates. I mean, how do you think they came up with Pirate's Rampage? It's based on a true story. How about it? Want to hear? Yeah. Why not? <laughs> Gather round and hearken to my tale. Before steel birds soared through the skies and tracks wove across the land, wooden ships were the primary means of travel. One such ship was crewed not by men, but monsters, aliens, of the high seas. From the fires of war, these pirates emerged victorious, leaving crimson waters in their wake. Their captain was a Malbra. The world's oceans now has sold to me. As for the king's treasure, ere his passing, he took his most prized possession, courted it, and sealed those pieces away, along with his four finest mates, to forever stand by. Whatever he hid, this map should point us to the locations in which its fragments rest. The spell he used to seal them away seems to have broken as well. But the pirate king's treasure is now ours to seek. Four ferocious fiends yet stand in our way. Doubtless, we'll put up quite a fight. And I, for one, can't wait! This is the greatest game ever made. Did I get to get some pirate treasure? <laughs> I'm so excited! God dang it, I have to, but I gotta do the story, guys. I can't do the pirate treasure yet. Oh my god. I was about to say, like, okay, wait. So I can fast travel anywhere now? Like, I can literally just, like, boop, I want to go back to the grasslands and I can just fast travel? So that's awesome. But then I was like, wait, so what's the point of having the tiny Bronco if I can fast travel anywhere now? Just kind of the, the entertainment value of being able to explore the globe like in the original game yes but also pirate's booty they, they were able to to insert some like a reason to use it other than just you know the fun of it dude it's man this game is just so good it's this game is so good and the fact that i can just get it oh my I mean, like, it goes without saying, but this truly feels like the evolution of the original game. Being able to just jump in the tiny Bronco and just, you know, I could just go to Midgar right now on the tiny Bronco and get Pirate's Booty on the way. Like, that feels like original Final Fantasy VII. You know, going into the map and fast travel in there, sure. This is a game in 2024, of course we should have fast travel, but this feels like the evolution of Final Fantasy 7. This feels like I'm playing Final Fantasy 7 in 2024. Being able to jump in the Bronco and just go and have like stuff to do on the map. On the map, not in a section, not in an open world section, on the map. Like, so freaking cool. I like how I talk about the evolution of Final Fantasy VII and then I jump on this thing and look like a total dweeb. Anyway. Uh, I do want to continue the story, but... We got some cards. I see cards. We still haven't done, like... 
still haven't done this stuff. Welcome. Or sorry, not the. Ooh. Oh, yin, yin and yang. Thanks for stopping by. This thing. Welcome to card. There's still so many. Oh my god, there's still so many. There's one called Curse of the Gi, and you can get Gi to talk. Dude, I want. I want this sign, like, in my room. <laughs> the bomb drinking the drink. That's so good. Dude, it's crazy. Like. I, I don't even know how to explain how I'm feeling right now. I feel like... I mean, at this point, like, you just, you can't go wrong. Like, either you could go do the story or you could go do literally anything and it's going to be fun. You could even just go back to an old place and just do, like, another version of a minigame. Like, there's just so much. Let's have you look over here. I just love it, man. Just, it, it just... I mean, we wanted... Everyone was... Everyone was praying for, like, an, a game like the original that had an open world that you could explore. Brother, we're so far past that. Like... In the original, yes, you could run around the world map, but there was like four things okay. to do. Now, Trust me, like you're ready to I've lived my entire life playing Final Fantasy VII. It's my favorite game. I love it. But there's like four things to do on the world map, okay? <laughs> That's just the way it is. But it's the feeling that you get being on the world map and being like, I can go anywhere. That's what everyone wanted. It wasn't like the actual content because the actual content of Final Fantasy VII is quite linear. You have a couple things you can do. You have the weapon seller. You have going out of your way to get limits. You have chocobo stuff. You have gold saucer. But, like, as you're playing through the game, you know, it, it, there's not a lot that really opens up to you. It's more of just the feeling of being on a world map and exploring and finding little areas on the world map and stuff, right? But, man, do we not have that feeling times like a thousand here. You know, and it's not just I can go into my thing and be like, oh, here's the quests I can do. Like, I could just go, like, I could go over to the Red 13 soccer game and see if there's like a new difficulty of it. And that's not something that's going to pop up in here. It's not just a list of objectives to do. Like in the remake, it was just a list of things to do. Once you complete the list, you're done. Like you've 100 percented, you know. But here, it's like they really did capture that essence of an open game. I feel like I could go anywhere right now and there'd be something to do. And it's not, you know, like I said, it's not just, oh, there's a quest to do in Midgar. Like, no, you can just go anywhere and there's just gonna be something. It's honestly one of the most amazing feelings I've felt in a game. I mean, it's, it's that Skyrim level of just anywhere is an adventure and they nailed it in a game that has a very story driven linear progression but they've really hit this beautiful balance of having that linear story but then also having an alive world it goes back to what we were saying before man the Final Fantasy 7 remake trilogy is the, the game that we didn't know we wanted Back in the day, we said, oh, I just want OG Final Fantasy VII, but with better graphics. That's what everyone was saying. I just want the remake to be the same game, but with better graphics. That's what I really want. But now looking at this, it's like, this is Square knew what we actually wanted deep down and didn't think would be possible. We didn't think they could make a remake of Final Fantasy VII that would make us feel as, you know, make the world feel as real as the original did. You know? But here it is. I feel the same way. When I walked out of Midgar for the first time as a kid, and I was like, oh my god, look at how big this world is. I can't wait to explore it. That's how I feel right now with this game. I have that same feeling. 
as a 31-year-old adult. You know? It's it's just amazing. It really is. And you could nitpick and be like, you know, <laughs> there's too much content or there's the content that's there is blah blah blah. But that feeling that we wanted as Final Fantasy VII fans, that feeling of walking out of Midgar and feeling like there's this open world to explore, I'm feeling it right now. At the end of the day, maybe the game's an 8.5, maybe it's a 9.5, maybe it's a 10, maybe it's a 7.75. All I'm saying is that feeling is there. I'm having that feeling right now. That's what's important at the end of the day, whether or not the game gets a whatever number out of whatever number. That feeling that we all wanted to feel when they said, hey, we're making a Final Fantasy VII remake. I'm feeling it right now. It's, it's amazing. Now let's play some cards. Excuse me, we're shooting here. <laughs> Wait, do you play Queen's Blood? You kind of look like you do. Oh my gosh, this is perfect. I'm Rihanna, an up-and-coming model. We're actually getting picks for a future right now. And I was really hoping to nab one of me playing Queen's Blood. You literally couldn't have come at a better time. What do you say? Help a girl out? I'll help you out. Raise power by one for each other enhanced or enfeebled allied and enemy card. Wow. That could be kind of wild. As a final drop. Hmm. Starts as a one, though. Raise power by two for each other enfeebled allied card. And it has diagonals. I think that's going in. When powered or when played, lower the power of enemy cards on affected tiles by four. So he just blasts, but it's only enemies. Hmm. Replace an ally and raise the power of allied cards on affected tiles. By the replaced ally's power, but mm, I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Not sure about that one. I think I'm gonna get rid of the specter. this guy this is still like a fun deck I don't even know if it's good or not it's just fun well given that they brought back Fort Condor but made it like a mini thing they might do the same with Queen's Blood, or they might just keep it as it is and expand on it. Queen's Blood is definitely a lot bigger than Fort Condor was, so good chance they just keep it. Wrong play, bud. I'm not going to be able to destroy that hedgehog. Was a good play.
Well, this counts as destroying, right? So I could do that. I need to capture this. This is a really awkward game. Oh, that was a terrible play, but I have nothing to take advantage of it. I drew really dead here. Player. If he takes that, I'm going to be in big trouble. I'm in big trouble. I am in massive trouble. I actually wish I could kill something with this. But I cannot. Didn't you end the game, you were gonna win. You gave me a chance to come back, but I didn't draw the right card, so. Oh, never mind, I had a six there. I didn't notice that. Never mind. I need to get rid of Amalgam. You sound good. It's about to be a pretty big Pretty big blow up here. Boom. I'm in trouble keeping stuff on the map. And he could just take that and then I'm screwed. So I could do this, but is that smart? in business here. Holly for the gifted sub. Appreciate it. So I probably just win, but yeah, we win. 
I wanted to try to kill the bloat float to like do some fun stuff, but I don't think that's gonna happen. All right, I'll just I'll take my W. <laughs> Feels like replace an ally and lower the power of allied and enemy cards on affected tiles. Uh, that might be a good card to replace my Almel Gam. Never seen you look more beautiful. And you, Mr. Card Sharp. Talk about a hunky diamond in the rough. Have you ever thought about becoming a model? <gasps> Mola, you're a genius. We could team up, be a card slinging, catwalk strutting duo. You and me taking over the world. What do you say? Yes. No. Harsh. <laughs> we'll be kicking it here for a bit if you change your mind. After all, a model's work is never done. What if you just said yes? And then that was like the rest of the game, you were just modeling QB cards. It was written in blood. I'll be waiting for you at the hotel in the gold saucer from a friendly specter. Are they inviting you to play Queen's Blood with them? I wonder. I wonder if I should just do that or Are you hyped up for the match? Do the others in here first. Must be nice to play Q Might as well. <laughs> yes, and then the credits start playing and then you just see Cloud and that chick walking down a runway. During the credits. Actually, this kind of works out. I can do these two and then we're going to the gold saucer anyways. So. That's probably why they did it this way. So that if you happen to do all the Queen's Blood stuff up to this point. Then you're. You can do it on your way. Oh man. You've got perfect timing. Want to go around against my little angels here? Okay, don't call them that. I believe in my cards and they believe in me. We're like a big happy family. Alright, let's not play this guy. Okay, let's not. You're so cute. No, you're losing me here. You gotta show them every day how much you care. But I also want to tell them how strong and hard working they are too, you know? Which is why I've been looking high and low for someone I can play against. I feel personally attacked. Oh, I missed these ones. Oh. Wait, I like this card. I think I like this card better than the capper wire. What is this? When destroyed, lower the power of enemy cards. He does have two, though, so he's a bit harder to destroy. I think I need to take... Well... We'll see how that works. I'm really just, uh... Flying by the seat of my pants here with this deck, but it's fun. Both sand hogs again. I just got a genius idea. I'm not even going to care about what he's doing. I'm just going to build up this combo and see how many points I get. 
Uh, I do probably want to take that mid, though, while it's there. That's fine. Just let him have that. Oh, the, oh, this, oh! Oh my god, someone call the police! This guy... <laughs> I feel bad, that was brutal. Holy moly. That was brutal. The love for his cards was not strong enough. Uh, okay. We're gonna do this. Give me a, like a regular, give me a regular two card. That's not what I really wanted, but. Oh, I could put Mouseros there, maybe. Oh, this is gonna be sick. Can you stop? I'm trying to do stuff here. Kind of messing with my flow. If I do this just to make sure he doesn't. Eh. Yo, thank you, gaming, for another gifted sub. Really appreciate it. All right, ready for the big combo? even going on? Gaming. Gaming is going on. A cry. <laughs> An actual real life crime. I get a plus 10 up there too if I can win that. Which I can if I do this. And I can do this. Up my own card. Oh! <laughs> yeah, I gave you a chance. I gave you a chance to get back in. All right, he didn't. He didn't do much with it. This isn't even that big of a win, but man, was it brutal. power by one for each other enfeebled allied and enemy card. See, now that could be dope. Oh, and he's only a one? No, that might be going in. <laughs> as much as I hate to admit it, it seems you have a much stronger bond with your cards than I do. Just what do you say to them to get them to love you so much? Huh? So you let your actions speak louder than your words? I see. By the way, on a completely different subject, have you ever heard of the card, the Shadow Blood Queen? Apparently there's only one. I tell you, if that's true, I hope I get the chance to see it in Cake, person baby. I bet it's the most beautiful card anyone's ever laid eyes on. I just destroyed that guy's dreams of becoming a Queen's Blood player while he's... Girls are just dancing in the background. Nice trouble. Well, I hope you enjoyed as much as I'm enjoying it. Got a furry friend who needs to burn off some energy? Come to run wild. Taking this. This is mine now. No, no new difficulty for Red 13 Rocket League. Come back soon. 
RIP. What do you guys think about... Because I, I was not expecting to be forced back to Costa del Sol. So like before I had said, what if we went through Costa del Sol and most of the stuff was closed? And then we did like part of Mount Nivelle. Then we came back and the rest of it was open. That way there wasn't that really long section where we had like three huge areas of minigames in a row. But now that I know that we are forced to come back here during this part. I feel like an even better route would have been you get to Costa del Sol and there's only like two mini games you have to do. And then it's just closed until this point. And then this would be the point where you did the rest of them. You know? I wonder why they didn't do that. And maybe not even have them be forced, but have them just be here, you know? I think that would have been awkward. Why? It, we've already... Like, when we get here... It opens up a bunch of stuff already. Well, I mean, you could have maybe made them forced. I mean, maybe it's a bit weird to, like, be doing forced minigames this late in the game. But, like, yeah, that's definitely true. Like, if... Because now we're starting to get into, like, the serious stuff, so it feels a bit weird to be, like, goofing off with minigames now. So that is true. But it would have definitely helped that pacing earlier. I mean, maybe just... Maybe just take, like... The shooting mini game and the the Red Thirteen mini game and maybe like the piano and just save those for now. Like I'm not saying take it all out, but from what I've heard, everyone, most of the people I've talked to had the same exact experience, or at least like what I saw in the chat. Everyone had like the same experience I had, where like we were starting to get mini game. Uh, exhaustion near the end of Costa del Sol, you know? So, just taking a few of those maybe and plopping them here, or just do what I said earlier and have it be after Mount Bell. but now that I know that we're already forced here, it, it makes me question even more why they didn't just have a few open up here. And they already had the tutorial pop up saying like, oh, there's more stuff to do with the gold saucer now. So it could have just said, and there's more to do in Costa del Sol. You know? I feel like that would have been better. It's not the end of the world. Because uh, like, even though I was starting to feel minigame exhaustion by the end of Costa del Sol, I was still having fun. It's not like I was dying. It's not like I was like, oh my god, I don't, you know. But I do think it would have been better that way for everyone. Is there anyone out there who can rekindle my fighting spirit? 